a man is a farmer and he has to use insecticides on his crops in order to keep the bugs away that would eat the crops. But sadly, the insecticides also kill other animals or birds. So he's in conflict, he's troubled because he's not sure what to do. There's a different insecticide that he can use. However, it is more expensive and it would eat into his profit. A woman is an animal lover. She loves animals. She will not eat red meat or any kind of meat. She gives to all of the animal organizations. She cries when she hears about some kind of cruelty to animals. And this one particular Christmas, her husband gives her a new coat and it has some fur trim on it. And she's like, well, I don't know. She's in conflict. She doesn't want to hurt his feelings. But she's kind of like, do I wear it? Do I not? I'm not really quite sure what to do. It's kind of against her principle. A boy is in the Boy Scouts, something very honorable. His troop decides they want to do a recycling project, but it's going to require a lot of work, a lot of separating all of the different types of items, the glass and the plastic and the paper, etc. It's a big project, and he's gangbusters about it. He's all excited for the first couple of weeks. But then he realizes that this project is kind of cutting into his soccer practice that he's got to make some choices here, and he's not really sure if he wants to do this service project anymore. He's starting to get a little lazy. It's easy to just put it all together. Like, why bother have to have to recycle? Why should I bother having to separate things? These three people all have a concern for environmental stewardship, all passionate about something, but then they start becoming in conflict because they have to make choices about, well, do they follow their passion or do they go with practicality? It's what Jesus is addressing in the scriptures today. He has people that are coming up to him. The first person says, Lord, I want to be a disciple. I want to follow you. And Jesus said to the person, well, guess what? I don't want lukewarm commitment. I want full-heartedness, not half-heartedness. I want you to come to me and to follow me and to give me your all. But he said to the person, well, guess what? You know, the Son of Man has no home. So you're going to have to give up material possessions. You see, discipleship involves sacrifice. Discipleship involves a giving up of something. So the person has this beautiful view of what following Jesus is all about. We don't know if they ended up following him or not. Because they may not have wanted to leave the comforts of home. This represents someone who says, you know, I want to have a church. I want to be a disciple. I want to have a church which has like great music and beautiful singing. But then they go to mass and guess what? They never open their mouth. Or the person says, I want to have a parish where we have no homeless within five miles of our parish because we have got all these great programs going on and outreach. But the person never gives a dime to the church. And they're not willing to even volunteer on a Saturday morning for Habitat for Humanity. So it's kind of like, well, I say one thing, but then I'm not really sure if I want to give up my time. I don't know if I want to give up sort of my sacrifice. But guess what, folks? Without sacrifice, there's no spirituality. They go hand in hand. The second person. Jesus invites them, come, follow me. They say, you know, I'd love to follow you, but I've got something else to do first, so I'll go do it tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll come follow you, Jesus, after I bury my father. Okay, Jesus is not being uh, insensitive here. He's not being uncompassionate. But he's saying, you know what? I need you today. I know there's always going to be stuff tomorrow. You know, you're going to follow me tomorrow. This represents the the person who says, you know, I want to go on a diet. But I'm going to do it tomorrow, I'll start. Tomorrow. But tonight, I'm going to have the biggest hot fudge sundae with all kinds of candy on it. Because tomorrow, I'll go on my diet. But tonight, I'm just going to feast. This represents the person who, um, in the church, says, well, you know, I'd really love to do more, like, Bible study. Or I want to do an adult formation class. Or I know, I'll look up up form.org, but I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow because, you know what, the kids are still young. I don't really have as much time. 
well, maybe my job isn't going to allow me to do these things. Well, perhaps there's some problems that I need to solve. But, you know, Jesus, I know you'll be there, so you can wait for me. Well, guess what? This person's living in, like, tomorrow land. I don't know how else to put it. It's, well, I'll do it tomorrow. First person's living in a fantasy of what they want everything to be. They're living in fantasy land. This person's living in tomorrow land. Then we have the third person. And the third person, you know, Jesus, again, follow me. Jesus invites them to come. But they're like, well, you know, I really want to come, but I have some family things I need to take care of. And Jesus says, you know, you don't look back. This person's living in yesterday. They can't move ahead. They can't move forward because there's things from the past that need to be taken care of before they can go into the future. Again, the Lord is like, look, I need you now. I need you here. I need all of you. I don't need you to be so worried about the past. I'll help you with healing. I will love you more than you can ever be loved. This represents someone who says, you know, I really want to go to confession. But back when I was in fourth grade and I went to confession, you know, the priest gave me more Hail Marys than I could say, so I'm never going to confession again. Guess what? You need to get over it. You need to, like, look for some healing here. I mean, work on this particular issue and move ahead. And Jesus is saying, come to me now. I don't want you when you have to take care of all of your baggage. Bring your baggage with you. Because guess what? I'm not, you're not perfect. And that's okay. And I love you in your imperfection. Come follow me here and now. You know, when he turned 30 years old and he was baptized in the Jordan, he began his public ministry. He left behind Nazareth. He left behind the carpenter shop. He left behind his family. He left behind his home. And he gave it all to us, to you and to me. Three years later, at the Last Supper, when he gave his body and his blood, he didn't say, I'm just going to give you part of my body. I'm only going to give you part of my blood. I'm not going to give you everything because I might need it (coughs) for later. No. In his humanity, because remember, he was fully human, fully divine. Maybe he thought about some of those things. Did something come to him in his human state? But guess what? He gave his all. When he walked up that hill with the cross, you know, was he kind of complaining about it? Did he think about turning, turning around and going back down? No. He said, I'm going to give you my whole body. I spread myself out for you. I open up my arms to the whole world for you so that you might have life, that you might have hope. He gave his whole self to us. When Jesus made a commitment to us, when God the Father made a commitment to us, when the Holy Spirit came to us, they didn't just come half-heartedly, they came wholeheartedly. They gave everything. So today, as we hear this gospel, maybe it's a chance to reflect on what is really our desire for discipleship. What is it that God really is asking of us here and now? Not tomorrow, not yesterday, but now. What does God want from each one of us? And are we willing to give it to him?